Two times, or seated two times, that doesn't make sense. Your seated spinal immobilization. Um, so we come in and we have some reason to suspect that this patient has a neck or back injury. Everything we've assessed on them is stable, so I don't need to do any life-saving things. We just need to um, stabilize their spine. We use these a lot uh, for like car accidents to try to get somebody out who's has some neck and back pain, but it's pretty stable. Because I take a little bit of time, so if they're not critical, where I have to do a rapid extrication, um, then I could I could use one of these. My partner's going to come in and hope he's fine. And at this point, I assess my circulation. Doesn't have the hand. <laughs> Circulation, sensory, motor, same thing. Here, has some neck and back pain, so I can't rule out. I'm gonna have to, uh, have to use my, my KED. I'm gonna measure my C collar. Again, remember we use the angle of the jaw, top of the shoulder, however many fingers that is. Use your sizing posts on the side. Cheat it a little bit, because that's about, well, it was on just a moment ago. Seat collar on. Partner still continuing to hold spinal stabilization. And then I'm going to slide the vest behind them. Now, this thing is a vest, it's going to wrap around underneath their arms. I have to get behind them somehow. So I don't want to move them too much, but I might have to move them a little bit. So if they're in a chair like this, I can come around the front and we can move them a little bit, just a little bit off the, the uh, chair. Or if they're in a car, obviously I can't sit there or stand there because that's the dashboard, um, they might be able to pull themselves forward a little bit. But I need a little space back here just to slide this. Slide behind. And get it pretty much in line with their spine. And then I come under their arms. And I want this to be up tight into the armpit. So this is actually a little low right now. So I'll just slide it up just a little bit. And I'm just gonna do my top strap just to kind of get it out of the way. But I'm not gonna secure it real tightly yet or snugly because this could interfere with their respirations. So there's still some room in there and it's up pretty, pretty tight there. Now my middle strap, I can do a little bit snugger. And when I get it down here, I don't want to jerk the patient by just yanking on that. I feed it through. So I grab that strap, push it towards the buckle, this one away from the buckle, and just feed it in there. So that's pretty snug. And then I do the same thing for my bottom. Now I have these two leg straps, and these are going to go from the outside around their leg, under their leg, and I want to get it up real tight into the groin, so I kind of seesaw back and forth until I get it up fairly tight into the groin, and then the white buckle, white buckle, same idea here, I feed it and pull it so I don't hurt them. stable yet so I have to do that but for most people there's a gap between the head and the device and however big that that gap is you'll have to fill that and that's what this pill is for most people you'll end up pulling it into thirds or you fold it in half and I usually squeeze all the air out of it and I get it pretty flat and we can slide it back there it's got pretty good posture might not even be able to get it folded So now that's fairly snug and stable up against the device. Normally these straps are white. It's one of the first things that gets lost with your KEDs with the head straps. So you know that these are the same straps that we use for our backboard. And they work. They're built. So. Across the chin. Take it on both sides. And I do that at a bit of an angle. And then across the top. And I angle it down. Bit. 
So at this point, I'll throw the tights on this. So right before I move the patient, I'm gonna snug this up a little bit, but again, making sure I don't interfere with their breathing. At this point, his neck and back are stabilized, so she can let go. I'm gonna reassess my circulation sensory motor, all four extremities, and then we're gonna move into a board. So on the side, there is a strap that's a handle. So we come here, underneath the leg, lift them out, put them on a board. Now, of course, the legs are strapped in place, so you don't want the legs up in the air. Release those two white buckles, straps for the legs once you get them on the board. Legs can lay flat, then we strap to the board, head blocks, just like you normally would. And then reassess circulation sensory motor function. And that is your spinal mobilization uh, seated position.